Hello and welcome to this episode of HBCU. I'm your host, D. Brown, CEO. Today's guest is a graduate of two HBCUs, Cahoma Community College in Clarkson, Mississippi, and Alcorn State University in Lorman, Mississippi. He won a Sports Emmy for a documentary featuring his successful merger of two rival schools in Philadelphia. Please help me welcome William Wade to HBCU. Will, happy to have you on the show. Glad to be here. Thank you, D. So, Will, uh, this show is, was created to highlight everything that's positive about HBCUs. And, of course, you've been a graduate of two HBCUs. Yes. I think it's important that we understand your journey. So you started at Cahoma Community College in Clarkston, Mississippi. Right. Uh, grew up in Chicago, Illinois. So talk to me about how do you end up in Clarkston, Mississippi at a small community college? Well, I never had a choice, D. Uh, my family is from the Mississippi Delta. My mother is from uh, a small town called Darling, Mississippi. Okay. In, in Quitman County. And my dad is from Bentonia, Mississippi, which is down in Yazoo County. So that we, I always knew I was going back to Mississippi even when I was in in high school. Uh, so well, all my friends were applying for Southern University, uh, I'm sorry, Southern Illinois University, yeah. Illinois State University, University of Illinois, Purdue. I knew I was going back to Mississippi. <laughs> I knew that the entire time. And so uh, I'm kind of a legacy of yeah. Cahoma Junior College at the time. It's Cahoma Community College now. But I knew that uh, my journey was going to go there. I didn't know where it was going to take me, but I'm glad that I chose to go to Cahoma Junior College, currently Cahoma Community College. So talk to me mm -hmm. about your experience at Cahoma Community College. What The first day you stepped foot on campus, mm -hmm. what was it like? Family, family atmosphere. I didn't know what it would be like at a large university, but I knew it wouldn't be like what I experienced at that small HBCU in the heart of the Mississippi Delta, in the middle of cotton fields and corn fields, which was new to me deers jumping across the road. <laughs> I didn't know anything about that, uh, being from the, the hardened streets of Chicago, but it was family from yeah. the first day. Everybody knew your name, everyone knew your learning style, and they catered to that. They created a, a pathway to success for every student that entered there. So I think that's the value of a small, historically black college. Now, Cahoma is known for mm -hmm. its legendary homecomings, right? right. Where it, mm -hmm. it would rival any homecoming at any uh, four-year university. Talk Absolutely. to me about the homecoming experience at Cahoma Community College. We look forward to it every year, and we don't miss it. Of course, the pandemic, we missed one or two, but it's a big opportunity for us to synergize and talk about what we're doing now and how we can help that community and how we can give back. So we look forward to it. So it's not just a social event. It turns into an organized business event, too, because we, we help each other. Right. And we help to bring up uh, and provide for the youth in the area now and anyone that wants to join us at, at Cahoma Community College. So you, you attend CCC, Cahoma Community College, mm -hmm. and you make a decision that you're going to further your education and you select Alcorn State University in Lorman, Mississippi. Absolutely. The uh, academic resort, as they call it, right? Yes, sir. So talk to me about that decision and, and how you ended up going to Alcorn. It was never a discussion Ole Miss was right there, Mississippi State, University of Southern Mississippi, but my graduating class, the class of 1989, we knew that we were going on to another HBCU, so we had to choose between Southern, uh, Jackson State, Alcorn, um, the, the historically black colleges in Alabama and, and in Arkansas, but I chose Alcorn because it was similar to Cahoma Community College at the time. It was larger, of course, yeah. but everyone knew your name. Um, you had name recognition and everyone helped you along the way. It was never a question at all, Corn, about if you're going to graduate. It's you're going to graduate and you're going to be prepared because of the family atmosphere again. Right. So that's something that I probably would have missed at some of the larger uh, uh, universities, four-year universities. So mm -hmm. Alcorn State University, the sounds of dynamite, the football program, Mm -hmm. What were what was the atmosphere like there for you know homecoming and, and games etc. Just very exciting every day, and, and I'm sure that it's still being captured now by students on campus. It's just every morning you get up excited. It's just <laughs> it's not about class only. You get it's the um, the socializing, the camaraderie, the lifelong friends that you make because. Uh, we are all there uh, from the same pathways. We didn't know each other before we got there. Folks from all parts of the world, uh, 
attend our historically black colleges, especially Alcorn. But it's just very exciting to get up and on game weekend, you don't go home. You, you, you know, right. it's on Friday, you're getting ready for the tailgating and the, um, talking to the folks, the alumni coming back. And it, it's just, it was just a fun atmosphere that now as an adult, when I talk to folks that didn't join us at HBCUs, they don't really get it. Yeah. Like, why do you <laughs> drop everything and go back to a homecoming? Why do you do that? <laughs> right. I don't want to call anybody's name, but, you know, they're <laughs> folks that look like you and I. Why do you stop everything and go back? I just can't explain it to you if you were not there. <laughs> right. It's the camaraderie, it's the yeah. friends, it's the lifelong friends you make, and you just want to go back and give back and, and talk about how we can make our experiences even better for our young people. Now, a significant mm -hmm. part of the uh, college experience, especially with HBCUs, is Greek life. Absolutely. And so I know that uh, the Gamma Pi Noops were in the yard down at Alcorn State University. So talk to me about, uh, you know, we're, we're fraternity brothers and Absolutely. talk about, you know, Cap Alpha Psi and the impact it's had on your life uh, socially and professionally. Well, um, at the HBCUs, you, you, you get to choose your, uh, you can, you don't have to be a part of a Greek organization, but being a social organization that really serves the community, uh, Cap Alpha Psi stood out for me. The Gamma Pi chapter when I went there and had a lot of, um, a lot of young men doing great things and I wanted to be a part of that. We were serving the communities, uh, coat drives and food drives and cleaning up. We were doing several things for the community. So that's just, it was just fantastic to me because that's how I was raised with my family. So I wanted to be a part of an organization that was giving back in that way. So yeah. Cap Alpha Psi provided that for me. And then uh, moving forward after that, we became the Gamma Pi Alumni Association and we still do the same things. Right. And I'm, I'm 30, almost 35 years removed from the campus, but we yeah. still serve in that capacity. And, and we try to pass it on and impress upon our young people to do the same thing. We're here to give back and help other people right. when it's all said and done. That's what we're here for. So uh, Cap Alpha Psi provided that for me at Alcorn State University. I'm so proud to still be a part of that legacy. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. a significant part of what we want to showcase here is really the success that HBCU graduates have in their professional lives. Right. And so I want to start walking through your professional life at this time. Right. And I know <laughs> that uh, when you graduated Alcorn, you became an educator, and I think you were in Memphis initially, yes. uh, teaching and coaching. So kind of talk to me about your uh, early career in education. So I did one year in Clarksdale. I went back to the home of Cahoma Community College, and I taught at Higgins Junior High, and then I moved on to Memphis after that. But uh, I still uh, focused on the tenets of wh how what I was taught at, at Cahoma Community College in Alcorn, and, and that is to give back and focus on other people and help other people and just to serve with empathy. And I right. did that. Empathy is really big now because of what the world has gone through, but I've been, and, and, and my fraternity brothers and my classmates at Alcorn and Cahoma Community College, we've always served in that capacity. Right. How can we give back and help our community? So I, I, I worked in Memphis. I did that for nine years in Memphis at Wooddale High School. I served as a um, baseball coach, math department head, math department uh, teacher, and I went on to Atlanta Public Schools and served as a teacher for one year, and then I went into administration. Absolutely. So I was the leader of a small learning community at Frederick Douglass High School, uh, and I had a great time really learning um, the pathway of, of, of learning for the whole child, individual students. So focusing on that, and I moved on to Krim High School in Atlanta Public Schools where I was a, a principal of a different program. It was an open campus program where we were open from 745 to 745, which is right. fantastic because we were able to capture and help students that uh, were heads of households. They were re-entering the um, uh, community from being incarcerated in some cases, but it was just different stories and we had right. to educate them. So, so I'm, I'm interested mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. you, you, so you, you, you migrate to Philadelphia, after, right? After Atlanta. After yes. Atlanta mm -hmm. and you become the principal of MLK yes. High School mm -hmm. and you had the um, task of overseeing the consolidation yes. of MLK and Germantown Absolutely. Uh, after Germantown was, was closed. Yes. And those two schools were rivals. Yes. And 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 so as the story go, uh, there was a lot of concern about mm -hmm. how those two schools would come together and integrate successfully. Yes. Uh, being such heated rivals. And uh, Dick Sporting Goods mm -hmm. uh, created a documentary uh, focused on the, the football program. And right. you ended up having uh, an award winning uh, documentary that mm -hmm. uh, won an Emmy. Uh, we 
uh, could be king. Absolutely. Talk to me about that whole process. Well, uh, it's a long story, but I'm gonna try to shorten it. <laughs> so everything that we, we've been talking about, Kahoma and Alcorn prepared me for that. I didn't know it was coming. You never know what's coming, but yeah. I said, oh, this is what I've been preparing for. So the superintendent, Dr. William Hyde, fraternity brother, uh, he said, I'm gonna let a camera crew come in. And I, I couldn't believe he would approve that. <laughs> I'm gonna let a camera crew come in and, 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 and document this merger, which nobody thought would work. You gotta keep it, these schools were 1.4 miles away from each other and been arch enemies for years. Yeah. Germantown was the oldest. But because of funding, Germantown had a giant building and not enough students and they had to merge with us. So, so my patience and consensus building in the community, I, I, I really got a, got a hold of the pulse of the community. What do we need to make this work? And it was very successful. We merged unscripted. The camera was there. They documented the athletic program, but we had so many more things going on. The alumni was fighting. They was fighting over what was going to be the name of the school, what was going to be the, the colors, you know, what, because they've been, I had to merge those two groups together. Right. The academic team, I had to merge them together. I had to choose all new coaches. There was a whole new coaching staff that I had to interview and hire. Nobody knew it was going to be that successful. So as the film shows, we won the city championship for the first time ever in King's history with that merger. So. Yeah. Nobody can ever take that away from us. And we caught it on film. It premiered at the Tribeca Film Festival. And um, it went down in history as a successful merger. And so went my career. Yeah. Everybody wanted to know, how did you do that? And that's what took me out to Santa Fe, New Mexico. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you transitioned to Santa Fe right. uh, as an assistant uh, superintendent. Yes. Uh, talk to me about that transition. Very different, but some of the same challenges that I found in urban America. So I was out with those wonderful people in New Mexico, and um, we dealt with uh, newcomers to America. We dealt with Indians on reservations, and we had to educate them. And they had some of the same issues that we found in urban America, in Memphis, in Atlanta, in Philadelphia. Um, they wanted to be heard, so I was in charge of turning around some of the lowest performing K-12 schools from elementary, middle, and high. And the experience was fantastic, an experience of a lifetime. I had primarily been working in secondary, but now I had to work K-8 also instead of 9-12. So I built, I built consensus with principals, I hired principals, I listened to community members, and we had a successful run in turning around some of their lowest performing schools. It's documented, in New Mexico they grade their schools A through F. We took some F schools and turned them to C, B, and A schools. And we did that by listening to people and really put, rolling up our sleeves and putting in the work and focusing on the whole child. And just very briefly, when I say the whole child, we're talking about social emotional learning, yeah. how they make decisions and how they perform academically also. So we did a great job out there and I'm so glad before I left, I was able to be on a team. All of us are gone now across America doing other things, but I created a school that was focused on project-based learning. It's called Early College. It's called <clears throat> ECO, Early College Opportunities High School with a CTE focus, hands-on learning, with some of those uh, literacy and math skills embedded in those projects that we did. So that school is now thriving. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I pushed a go bond when I was there, a general obligations bond that and the, the citizens voted to build a new facility. They're building it now, they're breaking ground on it. I'm, so, I'm proud of it, I was yeah. part of that. Yeah. I don't know if they ever mentioned me again, <laughs> but I know I was a part of that work. We took some students that were not traditional learners and re-engage them, they would have dropped out. Yeah. It's a high dropout rate. They would have dropped out. Same thing all across America. We re-engage them into something that fits them. And I'm proud that that, that, um, that will last forever and, and continue to engage students in that community in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So how do you feel um, your attendance, your graduation from HBCUs, Cahoma, Alcorn, prepared you to deal with those type of challenges uh, in the community with the, the various students you were charged with educating? Same thing, I learned that people are more than numbers. We're not just stats. You have to get tuned into the individual person, the learner, and that's that empathy piece I talked about. And I, and from, I walked on campus at Cahoma Community College as a kid from Chicago. My folks told me to go to college. I didn't know why I was going. Yeah. They sent me there knowing that this community would take care of me and grow me. I walked on with an Adidas, I never get an Adidas warm up on with my hat to the back, <laughs> listening to LL Cool J and arrogant, didn't know anything. Yeah. But they took me and turned me around and made me focus on, and I saw that the, the interest that they put in me, 
the compassion that they put in me and they was empathetic about my situation that I knew nothing about, right? right. Um, so they, and I took that and made it a part of my fabric and moved forward and I've had success everywhere I've went because I sit down and listen. And I don't, people may see what us talking today and chime in and comment, but they're gonna tell you, I'm telling the absolute <laughs> truth yeah. about being empathetic and listening to people and not judging people and believing in every learner, the learner that's going to go into CTE trades, the learner that's gonna to go to the armed forces, or the learner that's gonna to go to Harvard and Stanford and Yale, right. or HBC. I just, I tapped in everyone and listened and put them on the correct pathway. And I, and I thank Alcorn State University and Cahoma Community College for doing that for me. Now, mm -hmm. after you uh, finish your uh, job at Santa Fe, uh, New Mexico, you became a superintendent superintendent of a uh, charter, charter school. school district, right? Yes, yes. So talk to me about that transition. Right. Uh, I went to Pittsburgh, great community in Allegheny County, and it was a small charter network, Urban Pathways, K-5, and I, I stepped into a situation where we had a, a K-5 situation with about 400 students mm -hmm. growing, trying to expand. All the children looked just like me, and the teachers did not look like me. Yep. Great teachers though. And we had to really do some cultural, uh, uh, teaching our teachers how to deal with the cultural gap that stood. So that was a challenge, but we turned that around too. And I left that place better than I could find, better than I found it. And they're thriving as we speak today because of the work we did. But it was the basis of it was focusing on not only the individual learner in that situation, I had to focus on the individual teachers too, yeah. to be patient and take them through the professional development that they needed to be successful in that setting. And they're, they're thriving right now and doing very well. Right, and mm -hmm. so now you're back home uh, where you started. Yes. You're, you're full <laughs> circle. <laughs> full circle, and so you're back at Cahoma Community College, and I know that that's a, a job that you've taken out of passion yeah. uh, because you could Absolutely. be anywhere in the country, mm -hmm. uh, you know, giving your, you know, doing your craft. Yeah. And so talk to me about, uh, number one, why did you go back to Cahoma and what your role is there and, mm -hmm. and what impact you hope to make? Well, I could not ignore the opportunity to go back because I still feel indebted to them for what they did for me coming out of Chicago as an 18 year old. But I currently serve as the director of educational outreach, which is a big umbrella because I'm over uh, e-learning, which is so popular now. 80% right. of our students at Cahoma are online. Wow. Uh, at least have one online course. We don't, it, it, the pandemic pushed us there and, and we've adapted and, and love it. So I'm over e-learning, I'm over dual enrollment also. So students in high school are taking classes at the college level and high school at the same time and they're graduating with lots of college credits, which right. is free to them and it helps them advance in their futures. And I'm over all the adjunct professors and I, and I hire and support them at the same time. So. And I deal with the five counties that go into, that serve Cahoma, our, our feeders. But at the same time, I, I let them know we have so many programs at Cahoma. We're inexpensive, we're home for those five counties that we serve, and we are really there because a lot of our students want instant gratification at Cahoma, and we should help them with that, those stackable certificates. Right. So our CTE programs are really big, along with the academic programs. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to know that the state releases a report every year that I saw before I even came to Cahoma, that when our students leave that two-year two -year, uh, community college, when they go on to four-year universities, the state has tracked them and they have three point, a 3.1 GPA as an average. So the Cahoma students are doing very well when they leave and I'm, a, I'm proud to be a part of helping the superintendents in the area, the principals and the councils in the area to uh, understand the programs that we are in. And when they elect to be a part of those programs, we support them uh, in the same. So I'm very proud to work at where it all started for me at yeah. Cahoma. Well, that's mm -hmm. very noble work. I want you to take a, just a minute or two to mm -hmm. tell viewers why they should consider Cahoma Community College and Alcorn State University as educational opportunity for themselves or their children. I can't say enough about the family atmosphere. It's really a family atmosphere and, and largely at Cahoma as well as at Alcorn, people just like me come back. So a large part of the population actually went to school there. Right. So it's genuinely coming from their heart when they're serving students because they, they feel that Cahoma played a great part in their lives. So if I was recruiting out on the recruiting track right now, I would say 
you want to go far, but you want to stay home and get the basis. We offer the same courses that the four-year universities offer the first two years. You might as well get them now before you go on um, to the big university. So, and it gives you, gave me an opportunity to be mature before I went on to Alcorn. Right. So you need that maturity piece so you can take your study seriously when you leave. You don't want to go to the giant universities immature and not be successful and have to go back home. So choose small and choose historically black colleges. <laughs> Great. And so I would tell you, I, I attended uh, a PWI, uh, University of Memphis. And of course, I was at Alcorn with you for one year. Right. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, it's different as, as different as night and day. Absolutely. You know, if you're not in class, nobody cares. Right. They're not going to come looking for you. They're not going to they're not going to ask you where you were yesterday. Absolutely. You're, you're on your own. You're going to sink or swim. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our students um, from communities of color need that uh, those um, mentors and sponsors who can help keep them engaged and really be concerned yes. about mm -hmm. um, the outcomes. Uh, right. that they they achieve from the from the program and so you just you can't get that anywhere from you know other than the HBCU that I'm, that I'm aware of that's right uh, what has been your I guess biggest challenge uh, in terms of having degrees from HBCUs have you run into scenarios where people try to stereotype you or have you been able to overcome that unfortunately D I've been able to uh, well Fortunately, not unfortunately. <laughs> I've been able to steer because I went to some bigger schools too for my graduate degrees. I went right. to Christian Brothers University for my master's. I went to Jacksonville State University for more um, college hours. I went to Lincoln Memorial University for my EDS. But I have to bring the attention to CCC and, and Alcorn State University on my transcripts uh, and, and my degrees because they look at those big degrees first. Right. And but I have to tell them where I started. Right. So I haven't faced that. Now, people uh, who stopped after the historically black college, I'm sure they faced that. I'm sure they faced people judging them because they went to historically black colleges. So uh, I didn't because I, I continue my education at some of those. Uh, bigger universities, but you know, I wear my historically black college badge large. I, right. Not not to knock those other universities, but I don't wear that paraphernalia at all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I've I've never put a T-shirt on that says Christian Brothers University, and I love them. They did a great for. But I right. wear my my paraphernalia about Cahoma Community College and Alcorn State University all the time, and I talk to all young people in my daily walk of life about how important it is to find a school that caters to you. Yeah. You're paying for it. It should be tailored for you, the whole student. So um, I, I, what I would say to folks that face that is continue to talk about the the historically black colleges and what they did for you. Right. And I know they're doing it all over the country. My daughter Del uh, graduated from Delaware State University. She didn't want to go anywhere else because of how much I talked about the historically right. black right. colleges and universities. So um, it's a value. It definitely is, is a value, and we need to continue to uplift our historically black colleges and universities. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. Mm -hmm. uh, I think just one final question for okay. you. So you've done, you know, everything really across the spectrum in education. Uh, what's next for you? Do you have any uh, ambitions? Um, that I want to. I want to continue to educate young people. Um, I love higher ed where I am now. I want to continue to bring young people into historically black colleges and help them to expand their futures. Um, education is different now. It's so now, 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 you know, a lot of young people don't want to do what you and I did, go to four year universities, get advanced degrees, and they don't have to. But at Cahoma Community College, we offer in the CTE program in health sciences, we offer those career pathways where you can get uh, certified and um, AA degrees and you can work in major careers while you move forward to, if you wish, to right. a, big, a bigger degree. So I like higher ed and that's why I want to continue to work. And um, as, a, as a consultant, I want to continue to help other K-12 situations and, and share my experiences on how do we meet the needs of our young learners and how do we meet the needs of our educators too. Absolutely. It's, a, it's, it's been a thankless uh, profession and teachers are fantastic and I love working with them. Well, well, Will, for all that you have done okay. uh, in the area of um, advancing historically black colleges and universities, mm -hmm. uh, I want to present you with our HBCU 
Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, wow, fantastic. <laughs> and so, <laughs> look, we are proud of everything you've done. You've created a uh, legacy. Uh, you've, you've won Emmys. I mean, you know, it's, it's not your typical run-of-the-mill, you know, right, right. everyday educational story. And so we appreciate all you've done thank you. in the area of, of putting the spotlight on HBCUs. And to my viewers, thank you for tuning in. And remember, without you, there's no me.